Hello again from the Tin Man. If you guys have been waiting to see what I've come up with this time, um, this was just a little bit of a muck around. I've been reading a bit on using both sides of the coil because one side's really just a waste. Um, I've seen a few where they use two rotors and some that are using a horseshoe or a U-shaped mag um, core with a coil on it. Um, that both sides of the magnets pass through. I've done this one a little bit different, gone off on my own little world again. Uh, and uh, on the back of it, the one thing that it has done for sure is put a lot more torque on the motor. So on the back of it, I've just put this little uh, generator, I suppose you could call it. Just got six alternating magnets on it, a little coil out of a relay, and a couple of LEDs. This could drive a whole lot more than it's driving at the moment because uh, the uh, torque on the shaft now using both sides of the coil has increased quite a bit so definitely could drive a bigger generator. Um, okay so what I've done I unlike most have built a rotor with the magnets on the outside and put the coil in the middle so the magnets are of course north, south, north, south, north, south and believe it or not your SSG will work like that quite fine don't have to be all north out or all south out, they can be alternating um, so yeah that's what I've done and at the moment I've got it running on 24 volts put two 12 volt batteries up in series just to put a load on the charge side I had to put a 10k pot on it to calm this thing down with uh, the magnets being on both sides. Uh, what's happened now is the primary coil or the trigger coil if you want to call it that uh, because it's getting magnetised from both sides it's putting out twice as much power so it, that's the reason for the 10k pot just to slow it up. Um, power consumption, well that's gone up for some reason, I'm not sure why and I'm not too sure about having the two magnets top and bottom in close proximity to the coil when the field wants to collapse, I don't know what effect that has on it but yeah the current draw has gone up but the output on the charge side of it has gone right off the scale now I borrowed the two 240 volt neons and put on here just to make sure that we were still getting the high voltage spike and it blew them to pieces. So there's, there's a whole lot of power coming out of there. As you might see when you see the batteries climb up when we start it. They're two fairly big batteries, so um, 7 amp hour batteries. So it's uh, 24 volts at 7 amp hours at the moment. Um, and they climb quite quick so they've sort of stabilised between around 25.2223 volts so uh, they've been sitting about two and a half hours now so they should be reading fairly true so the other thing I noticed with this, a coil really squeaks now you might be able to hear it and I'll start it off slow so you can listen to it and change tone when we wind the potentiometer up and down but uh, anyhow we'll give her a spin up not sure if you can hear that but yeah the coil squeaks Squeaking pretty hard there. So at speed we're drawing between 20 and 30 milliamps. Um, as you can see the battery's climbing, will charge at that rate. 
lighten up the couple of little LEDs here. Like I think I mentioned before, they're 2.5 volt, 40 milliamp LEDs. So, um, charges the batteries really good, really good. To bring those two batteries up at a reasonable rate like that's pretty good for, let's say, 30 milliamps, it could be 29. So, but anyhow, we'll give her a kick in the guts now because this thing moves out quite well. Starts to shake the shit. This is not quite balanced. The road is just a PVC cap with a bit of pipe inside. Drilled a hole in the back and uh, stuck the shaft in it. But if you open it right up, she really starts to charge the batteries quite well. But of course, now we're drawing about 680, 690 million, 700.
like an Alex Van Gretel. shaft to drive a generator and also a big improvement to the battery charging side of things so it'll work quite fine on 12 volts as well we we'll even drop it down there with the 24 volt batteries all that but still And it'll run really slow, the um, bend case with the magnets on both sides of the coil, the trigger coil fires up at a very slow speed to fire up the transistor, so that's another advantage of it. But you really notice a squeak in the coil now with the magnets both sides of it. That's happy to run at about that speed, around between 10 and 20 milliamps. So yeah, having the coil, uh, whichever way you do it, whether you've got two rotors linked together, oh, I'm not sure about the U-shaped coil, I think you lose too much of the magnetic flux through the ring, having the core right around and then the coil in the middle but um, this way definitely works really well and 
that's quite happy to tick along at that speed. Like I said, between 10 and 20 milliamps. And plenty of power left to drive our little generator at the back. Like I said, that could easily have another five coils bolted around that. Even putting your finger on it to slow it down, it's, it's fairly hard, so. Um, not much more I can tell you about it, it's still in the experimental stages. Going to whack a few more coils on the back and link them up in series. See how much power I can pull off of that. See what kind of a difference. The good thing about the pulse motor is the more strain you put on the shaft and the slower it rotates, the less current it draws, of course, because it's firing less. But that's it up to today. And just thought I'd show you, seeing there's been a few guys keen to look at it. And I'll do a bit more work on it, see what I can get out of it, and keep this posted. Cheers, guys.